Dr. Randall, the Soul Doctor, author of Soul Doctoring, Heal Yourself, Heal the Planet, shares her 40 years of experience as a cross-cultural practitioner, medical futurist, and expert in 20 different modalities of healing, along with amazing interviews with some of the leading minds in medicine and big thinkers in all walks of life. The stories of our lives are the woven energies of our soul's paths. They feed and ignite the spiritual light that nourishes the universal soul, the one mind, the cosmic consciousness where we all come together. This podcast is going to be a deep dive into the personal stories of people who have made significant contributions to the planet. What formed them? What moved them to become these leaders and innovators that inspire us so? Hi, Kaidi. Hi, Dr. Gail. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm so excited to have Kaidi Rod- Rodriguez on my show today. She's an am- amazing uh, psychologist, speaker, and author. And she has two major initiatives. First, her practice, which is called Serenity Wellness and Therapy, which transmits a huge message right there, right in the, t- in the title. And it's in Montclair, New Jersey. And if you sign up, I guess you, you can get this free booklet they, they hand out called Welcome to the Couch, if you want it. Yes. yes. Is that right? If you to the website, you sign up for our mailing list and you can be sent. That was my first little ebook um, for people who aren't quite sure if therapy is, is, is a right fit for them. We answer all of the basic questions that people have when they want to do a therapy consult, plus a little bit more from that. So that's just a little free resource. That's brilliant. I, I love that. And um, so it seems to me you that your major passion is helping, well, all people, but especially teens uh, who may not have the confidence they want to carry out their their mission, their sole purpose, I call it. Yes, yes, we could say that. But my primary target, what I tend to connect with the most is uh is is women adult women but i've i've worked with all of the above throughout my journey you know from the time that jersey i started working a lot with kids and teens and working in middle schools and going to schools and now i do a little bit more with the adult population so we're here with katie rodriguez an amazing psychologist speaker and author who has two major initiatives right now in her life, maybe more, but the ones that uh, my attention was called to was first of all, her practice called Serenity Wellness and Therapy. And it says exactly what it is. And if you sign up for them there, you get a free ebook called Welcome to the Couch. Can you tell us about that? Yes. So if you go to our website, www.serenitywellnessandtherapy.com, and you sign up to be on our mailing list, you will be mailed a copy of my first ebook, Welcome to the Couch, A Beginner's Guide to Therapy. So this is for people who aren't familiar with the therapeutic process, what it means. Maybe you have a lot of questions initially. How do I know that a therapist is right for me? What's the difference between a an LCSW and a, a psychologist, all these questions that people tend to have um, when they're when they're doing a consultation, all written in the form of, of you know, a little ebook. And we also point them in the direction of a lot of different resources from LGBT resources to suicide prevention. So all the mental health resources that a person could need right there in, the, in a little ebook. Brilliant. Well, thanks for that. And you, you're also dealing with a lot of people with severe anxiety, panic attacks, social pho- phobia, in addition to self-esteem and self-confidence, which Correct. are off, often the root cause for those issues. And sh- we sure need it right now, don't we, during the time of COVID, like the second go-round? Absolutely. Absolutely. PTSD really is what we're all experiencing, and we don't even realize it. Yeah, Exactly. It's like a, um, I wonder, has there ever been an example of just, you know, complete, total, prevalent PTSD of an entire population? Well, I, you know, I, I like to look back at some of, um, I recently read a book by Elizabeth Gilbert, uh, City of Girls, and she talks about, uh, 
what the nation was going through in the 40s with World War II mm -hmm. and how there was just kind of a collective trauma that everyone went through, whether it was men going off to war or women and children and families losing the people that that they loved, you know, as a result of this war and women having to uproot themselves and go to work. And, you know, so collectively there was a, a trauma. And I think nations tend to go through this, you know, every so often, just the civilizations, we could say, go through these things. Um, and we always get through it. And that's one thing that mm -hmm. really encouraged me as I was reading that book and looking about looking at, um, I did some research on the Spanish flu um, pandemic as well. We always get through it. But in the midst of it, it feels terrible. And we just have to get through this. Right. And there's a lot of good examples to draw from those previous traumas as well. So thanks for bringing Absolutely. it up. You also have this amazing, you sent me one of your journals. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's, it's called the Confidence Project Journal. And there are, it's written so nicely. There's 52 prompts to uncover yes. what your personal strengths or um, areas that need work might be going through it. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah, so this is a journal. The journal was, I would say, a good three or four years in the making. And uh, what initially kind of inspired me, prompted me to work on this journal was, you know, I was Miss New Jersey in 2009. And uh, I spoke to a lot of kids, a lot of youth during that time. And one thing that I noticed from a lot of our girls throughout, you know, the tri-state area in New Jersey was that a lot of them struggled with their own, with their self-esteem and with their confidence. Um, and even me as a title holder, I had my own f version of, of confidence issues. And I think that many people do, many women do, um, and there's different levels of confidence and there's so many different things you can learn about yourself um, through the power of journaling. So I said, why don't we take this, this kind of expertise that I've built over the years that's meeting a need for our, a certain population and using a tool that I believe in. Um, journaling is a very powerful tool. I usually assign it you know weekly for most of my clients some form of journaling because it builds self-awareness so we combined the two and we came out with the, the confidence project and it was really important to me you said it was beautiful thank you um to make it an experience for women you know to have a beautiful journal it's hardback the vip version is hardback um, you know, we have a self-love playlist that goes with it and we have our gold pen and our gold bookmark so that as you're doing this, you create this time for yourself to sit and reflect on what are the things that make you amazing and what are the things that, how, how can we process some of your insecurities to help you to be more comfortable with them essentially. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it really is gorgeous. And one, I read through it, so I wanted to see what they all were. But the thing, one of the ones that moved me the most was the one where you said, where it's written by Lori Duchen. Is that how she says it? Lori uh, Duchenne. It's the last yeah, one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it says, you can be a good person with a kind heart and still say no. Because, and then it goes, it elaborates, but it is something that we tend to have problems with as as women, mm -hmm. as we, you know, we're taught early on maybe, or, you know, to just go along and not say, not say no, you know, and, um, right. Sometimes the people is very strong in, in women. We're kind of conditioned to be people pleasers and just kind of keep the peace. But if in order to really love yourself and operate at a higher level, you have to know what to say no to more often. Right. Yeah, like the old song says, you know, know when to hold them and know when to fold them and know when to walk away, right? I mean, sometimes saying no is the exact right thing to do, and people re respect you more for it, and it'll help, you know, your progress even faster. Right, right. I think some of the most successful and powerful women have mastered the art of saying no, because mm -hmm. when you're saying Yes to to everybody. Um, you're often saying no to yourself, but you're also not prioritizing anything. And when you have a goal, you have to have a priority, and that means sometimes saying no to what doesn't line up with that priority. Exactly, exactly. Kylie's a very educated woman. 
Uh, she has a bachelor's of arts from University of South Carolina with her major in psychology. She was magna cum laude. She has a master in the arts from New York University. And of course, she's a, a licensed social worker. And she's also licensed in independent social work and certified uh, s- school social worker and has 10 years of experience with, or is it more than that now, with youth, families, and adults. Yeah, it's probably a little more than- time flies right so when did you know as a young girl this was what you wanted to do how did you how did you determine that eventually did you knew you were wanting to help people and was you do how did you know you were going to help women was it I, you know, I think it evolved over time. I've always, I think one of my gifts, spiritual gifts is just, we in, in the Christian church, we say the gift of mercy. So I, I feel for people, you know, com- a lot of compassion. That's always been in me. Um, as a child, I didn't quite know exactly how that would manifest. I thought initially I wanted to be a doctor um, and then, you know, a veterinarian, but always wanting to help. And as I grew older, um, you know, I grew up between New Jersey and South Carolina and where I lived in New Jersey, Patterson is an urban area. And, um, you know, I noticed that a lot of my peers just didn't have access to resources and have access to the things that they needed to to be well and to you know pursue their goals. So my um, drive into social work was initially around nonprofits and being able to create resources, organizations that have resources for kids. Kids. But of course, life happens and, you know, opportunities and doors open and things and you kind of pivot. Uh, so I got the master's in social work, uh, but I decided after my time as Miss New Jersey that it would be better for me to go more along the individual road and, and work with people clinically one on one versus trying to create um these large organizations. So it hasn't been like this, you know, linear path, but you know, just saying yes to the right things, I think, has allowed me to land in this position. And I, I have to say, I'm a pretty good therapist. You know, I've helped a lot of people. So I think I made the, the right decision. Yeah, definitely. Oh, your spot looks really sweet there, too. So um, so you as a young girl, you you always wanted to to help people or you said animals, too. People and animals, I, I, I just care a lot. That's, all. <laughs> that's you know, that's, you know, from my, my parents, they still keep a little, it was it something that I drew them where it said, you know, it was about pollution. And I wrote out this long, passionate letter of how can we help save the world and why are we polluting the oceans? And this was me as a little kid. So I've always just cared a lot about people and our planet and helping. That's just, that's just, you know, that's just who built into who I am. So it makes sense that I became a social worker. Yeah. Well, we still need that other, those other inspirations and thoughts you're having right now because we definitely, the planet needs you too. So, right. It's, it's only gotten worse since I was a kid, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, if we, you know, my belief is if we all come together with the same thought process like you had when you were a little girl, and I'm sure you still have it. That makes a difference right there. We're pointing our sacred arrows in the same direction. So, absolutely. And it, and it doesn't take major shifts, you know, when if, if we're talking about something like planet, the pl- planet and climate change and things, small things like carrying your canvas bag, you know, if everyone collectively has that, that care and that purpose, and, mm-hmm. you know, as you said, going in the same direction, we can make a major change, but we have to all get on the same page. Oh, thank you for saying that. Actually, I, I'm just publishing a book called Soul Doctoring, Heal Yourself, Heal the Planet. And that's one of the things that I emphasize is it doesn't, you know, you don't have to become a rocket scientist. You can do small things. And if right. we all do small things, they add up and they're going to make a difference because the earth is very sensitive. And we learned that during the first COVID outbreak when we removed mm-hmm. ourselves and the earth got better way faster than scientists predicted. And Things evolved all around the globe at the same time. Thing, you know, right. species that were extinct came back, you know, on and on. It's just phenomenal. So, yes, you're right. If we all make those small changes, we can, or I would say if a critical mass of people 
gets into that mindset to make those small changes, we can make a huge difference for our Absolutely. Planet. Carry some reusable straws. Let's stop the, the, the single use straws and carry your cla- your canvas bags. If, if we could get everyone to do that from this podcast, I think we will have accomplished our mission, Dr. Gail. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Okay, so where do you see you where do you see yourself, your initiative going in the future? So, you know, the next goal, of course, we want to continue to push the Confidence Project journal and get the journal into as many into the hands of as many women as possible. Um, and then the next the next step after that is confidence project retreats um retreats in which women can really work on the core get to the core of where that insecurity where that difficulty and confidence comes from i do something called uh, ifs internal family systems it's a certain type of therapy that's centered around the inner child so we'll be focusing on getting in touch with the inner child that may carry burdens of um not feeling good enough, not feeling loved, fearing failure, things like that within retreat settings um, and also doing things that help to boost confidence. So whether that be skydiving or hiking or going salsa dancing, fun things that will bring confidence out of women and help them to see that, you know, you can challenge yourself and, and make it through, you know, confidence is built in a number of different ways. So that's part of what's next. And then, as I said, um, you know, Prior to us talking, I'm really passionate about helping to uh, build minority communities and helping women, but also minority communities. And I believe that one of the foundations of the community is the family one-on-one. And so I'm going to be branching into a direction of couples therapy um, later on this year and just working more with families. I think that is, uh, like I said, that's one of the cornerstones of society. If you can build strong families, strong couples, you can build strong nations. And um, at least in the African-American community, there's been a lot of things, you know, from a systemic standpoint that have made it difficult for families to remain together. And so we're going to work on dismantling that through, through therapy. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's true. You know, whenever we practitioners see people, the next, well, if you're really healing the person, the next thing you look at is, well, what's their home life like? What's their environment like? Because you can't just heal that little person, you know, separate from that. You have to look at what's right. happening in general for them. So that's a beautiful thing that you're creating. Absolutely. And, you know, honestly, I, 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 in my practice, I have um, a therapist that works with, with kids, but I don't often work with kids or teenagers as much anymore because they don't have the agency. And if you can give a kid as much tools and resources, but if you put them into an, uh, a, a difficult environment, an unhealthy environment, an abusive environment, they can only go so far. And yeah. so I think how about if we work with the parents and helping them to create stable environments so that, you know, when we give the kids the resources, they can flourish as opposed to going home to the same uh, trauma. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. So what what do you see uh, happening in general for, you know, the anxiety, the the COVID, you know, going forward? How can we help our our fellow individuals, women, men, uh, kids Mm -hmm. to handle this? Well, I think the one thing that I'm very happy to see is that mental health as a whole has been more prioritized in, in our country and, you know, in our world, there's much less of a stigma now than there was even 10 years ago. So we're heading in the right direction as far as that's concerned. Uh, we can't prevent, you know, traumas from happening. It's unfortunately, it's a part of life. Negative things are going to happen, but some of the things that, one of the, the the greatest indicators of whether or not an event, a bad event becomes traumatic is whether or not you, in, you, you experience that event in isolation. So, you know, there's, there've been a number of studies on, uh, of studies on lab rats and how, you know, if you give them a trauma, an electric shock to their feet, they're much less likely to develop ulcers and to be unhealthy if they have a little partner in the in the cage with them that's going through the same thing. And so this is all proof that shows, you know, we're tribal beings and we have to, we, the more we stick together, the less likely um, 
the less of an impact negative things are going to have to us. So what does how does that translate into going through a pandemic and dealing with stress and anxiety? Uh, be mindful of being, staying connected. Check on your neighbors. Um, you know, we if if we can't gather in person, um, then making sure that people have the things that they need. Hey, let me call you. Do you need anything? Can I drop something off to your home? What can we do to stay connected and just care and take you know take care of each other and care about one another? I would say that would be one of the great greatest things. And then the second thing. Um, the tool that I give my clients the most that I would say is effective with about 90 to 95 percent is learn to properly deep breathe, you mm-hmm. know, work with your nervous system and get your nervous system under control, um, get your mind body connection under control. And that's going to help you to tolerate things, uh, tolerate the stress a lot better than if, if you weren't um connected if you don't have that nervous system under control so between those two stay connected and work on your breathing what do you think you're dr gail (laughs) yeah i i also teach breathing you know i have my own but it's all the same you know Mm -hmm. different different techniques yeah but it's breathing is breathing we're born knowing how to breathe that's really amazing thing if you watch a baby breathe watch their little tummy rock you know they know how to do this so we got it lose it at some point we forget how to properly breathe going through stress and we some people are holding their breath and exactly all kinds of we don't realize yeah yeah that's what we, we unlearn breathing a, a talent that we're actually bo- born with so i get people back to doing that just like you and you know the other thing too like you said community has been proven research has shown a tight community you know leads to a healthier life Leads Absolutely. to a healthier person, leads to a healthier mm-hmm. lifestyle for a group of people. And it's not just community, but also family. So if you got any family or family's not always blood related to you too. Mm-hmm. Your friends are your family. And right. like you said, stay connected. If you can't be connected with them in person, you can be connected with them on the phone at the very least or Zoom, you know, we're all Zoomers now. We Zoom everything. So, right, you know, right. any anything just like this, you and me together right now feels pretty good. So it, it, any way you can keep that connection is going to make you a healthier person and is going to make the person you're connecting with healthier. So. Right. And I've even challenged some of my clients to rethink, you know, it, it, for those that that it's possible for to rethink their living situation. You know, let's say this pandemic goes on for another year or two. Um, If you, if there's a way, if you're a single person and there's a way that you can switch your arrangement to have a roommate, that might be a, 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 an option, you know, so just we're, we can connect virtually as much as possible. You know, that's, that's good, but nothing replaces that inter in-person interaction. And so I would definitely recommend that to people who are living alone or single. If, if, you know, if there's a way to switch to a more communal environment while we're going through this collective stressor, um, consider it. You know, even when we look at the difference between individualist societies versus the collective communal societies, uh, individualist societies like the United States tend to have much higher rates of anxiety and depression. And um, there's something to be said about that. We have access to all the things that we need from a financial standpoint. Well, that's a sweeping statement. But our anxiety and depression tends to be much, much higher than those that are more collectivist, communal focused. Yeah, I agree with you that, that, that when people say it takes a village, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, they're not kidding. It does take a village. So, And with the costs of groceries and everything else, goods going up so dramatically, sharing is, is a good idea, you know, in every right. way. So living, sh- sharing and living, sharing in food, you mm-hmm. know, growing your own food and sharing it with your community and your neighbors is a much healthier way to go. So. Absolutely. If we can get back to some of those basics, you know, I think we'd be a lot better off. I agree. hundred percent. Well, that's just wonderful. I love the way you think. I love your journal. I love the things you're doing. What, what can you leave my guests with today that, um, as a few nuggets to, you've already done it, but <laughs> if, you, if you have a few more nuggets to carry mm. through and into the future. 
a few other nuggets. Do we want practical tools or do we want mindset tools? Whatever you think is the most important. I think practical is always good. Practical. So I gave the, the, the deep breathing. The, the second tool that I tend to give to a lot of my clients that are dealing with stress and panic is um, the power of cold water, cold showers, cold. I call it cold, cold water shock. Um, I, it's, you know, I think it's so effective for a number of different reasons. So if you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling anxious, don't underestimate the power of stepping into a cold shower or holding ice cubes or splashing ice cold water on your face. Um, and it's going to help you in a number of different ways. It's going to, one, if you step into that cold shower, you're going to be forced to deep breathe. And that was, <laughs> that, that was step number two, step number one, you're going to take that deep breath in and it's also going to cool your body off kind of from the, the outside in. And it, that sends a message to your brain that says, oh, things are cooling down. The danger must be, you know, must be dispersing because our the stress response is more of a warming up response. So if we cool ourselves down, that kind of tricks the brain into being calm. It also does what we call grounding. So grounding is, you know, where you're coming out of your head and getting more connected to your physical senses. So if you're stressed, if you're worrying about COVID and, you know, climate change and all of the things and you're very much in your mind, when you step into that cold water, you have no choice but to, your mind is going to go to how cold that water is. Mm -hmm. And although it's comfortable, it's not unsafe. So it brings you right back into the the physical reality of where you are and gets you out of your head. And then the final thing, is that it really builds your capacity to deal with uh, discomfort. You know, although you don't want to be in the water, it's not the most comfortable thing. If you can breathe your way through it and kind of get this mind over matter type of approach, then you can tolerate things, which is essentially what a lot of anxiety and stress is. Breathing through it, getting through the moment, and and then, you know, eventually you realize you're okay. So I think those cold showers are one practical tool that, I think are really effective. Um, yeah. Yeah. It sure resets your autonomic nervous system, doesn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Well, yeah. it's just been fabulous, Kaidi, to talk to you. What? How can people get in touch with you? How can people get your journal? What if people want you to come talk or what if people want to come see you? What? What's the best way? Thank you so much, Dr. Gail. Uh, you can go to my website, Kaidi B, as in boy, Bettina, Rodriguez.com, Kaidi B, Rodriguez.com. And you will see a tab for speaking engagements and the topics that I speak on, as well as an option for the Confidence Project Journal. Uh, we have a hard, we have the luxury VIP set, which is what you receive, Dr. Gale. And we also have a paperback version that that's available on Amazon, but you can go to the website to get a link to either one. Um, and there's also a link under counseling and therapy, which will take you to our therapy practice. If you're a New Jersey resident, we have to be, you know, we're licensed in New Jersey. So you have to be a New Jersey resident for that. And that's how you can find us. And we're also on Instagram, KaidiBRodriguez.com on Instagram and TikTok and all your social media platforms. Facebook? Yes, we're on Facebook as well. Same address? Uh, yes, yes. We went through and branded, made sure everything was all connected. So. Okay. And so practices serenity, wellness, and therapy on Facebook. Okay, perfect. All right. I thank you so much. Don't go away, though. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Love you. Bye. I'm Dr. Gail Randall, creator and host of Soul Stories. I just want to thank you for listening to my podcast. I recently got a notification from the international podcast people, and I was astounded that so many countries are listening to my podcast in the category of alternative health. So thank you. And please continue to listen. I especially want to thank Egypt, Croatia, Japan, and Switzerland, also France and Ireland, because my numbers were quite high there. So keep up the good work and 
check out my Instagram at Dr. Gail Randall, and particularly check out my Instagram TV where you can hear me talking about alternative medicine subjects and also see me. It's a very good show, and I think you'll like the subjects. It's on 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every Friday, but it's recorded there, so you can find it there anytime you look. Okay, thanks again. I love you guys. This is Dr. Gail Randall from Soul Stories, an author of Soul Doctoring, Heal Yourself, Heal the Planet. I want to thank Saltology, our sponsor, at bathsalt.com, which fits perfectly into my medicine bag as, as it, like me, calls upon the ancient wisdom and modern technology to heal, especially with the stresses and ills of our modern times. The Bokak brand uses organic salts combined with organic essential oils sourced from ancient Egypt to provide a perfect remedy for your bathing ritual and healing from modern stresses. The Relief RX brand is a unique one-of-a-kind healing salt that uses organic CBD, treated with a unique emulsification process to create nanoparticles which easily enter the skin to most effectively heal and relieve aching muscles and joints. Whether from chronic inflammation or just a rough workout, this is the perfect healing bath especially when you add the organic essential oils of neroli, lavender, eucalyptus, or grapefruit. Your body, mind, and soul will be lifted and soothed like never before. Go now to bathsalt.com. I also want to give special thanks to Larry Antonino and Agora Borealis Recording Studio for music and score and also to close to the earth.com for IT and computer assistance. Also supported by Randall Wellness Network, bringing health and wellness to you directly. Medical futurist Dr. Gail Madeleine Randall brings 40 plus years as one of America's most forward thinking doctors, healers, and emerging authors onto a diverse media platform to empower our paths to health, wellness, increased consciousness, and vitality. Gail Madeleine Randall, MD, has long practiced, taught, and encouraged patients to take control of their healing processes and journeys. Randall Wellness Network provides a 360-degree platform for people to heal themselves, and she most emphasizes regenerative approaches for healing individuals, communities, and the planet as one. For more information, go to drgmrandall.com and Instagram at drgailrandall and check out the robust Instagram series on Instagram TV, also Facebook, Randall Wellness, and also Dr. Gail Randall.